Hey, Pop Robots, today let's rescribe a panel line. Hey guys, I'm Lincoln Wright and I started this YouTube channel to share with you both my experience in Japan as a studio modeler and all the new stuff that I continue to learn. Today, panel line rescribing. Often after we fix seam lines, we'll need to re-add and repair the panel lines that run through them. I've had some really helpful feedback suggesting that I need to get to the point quicker in my tutorial video. So I've cut this video into two parts for you. First is the simple and practical demonstration of panel line rescribes shown for you here on YouTube. And the second part is where I share the uh, studio tips and hacks for scribing the complex curves, ultra quick and easy. And I'll also explain how to strategically use panel line scribing to add interest, volume and depth to the panels and the panel lines on our model projects. And that section will be available to you, the Pop Robot Army on Patreon, Paint on Plastic. Okay guys, straight into it. As you can see in this photo here, uh, this is the uh, panel line that I need to repair. I need to rescribe it and uh, put it into place. Here, uh, I've laid some uh, scribing tape over the top, a guide tape. These, this is the one I'm using, is the six millimeter one from Haikyuu. Hi Haikyuu parts. I uh, met those guys, friends with them over in Japan. Uh, so I have this one, six millimeter. I often use uh, this one, but a lot less, uh, three millimeter, just for getting into tight places. It's, uh, it's basically just really thick sticky tape. Make sure it's on there. Now I'm working a little bit back around for the camera for you. Uh, often I'll put a pencil line in there, but the, the Folke ones, they're pretty, pretty thick and bomber. So I'll go straight in. Uh, there's two tools that I like to use for this. Uh, either a, uh, a not so sharp, I just wanted to show you on my bench, I'll usually have two kinds of cutters at any one time. Uh, a nice new clean one, which is good for photos too. And then a beat up nasty one. And I like the beat up nasty one for this, that's the truth, because uh, it's not as sharp. The other one I use for this is uh, this one. The, uh, I think this is also just called a scribing tool uh, from Hasegawa. I'll go with this one. This is the most popular one. The one you'll read about on the interwebs is the back of the X-Acto blade. So instead of going front in like this where it will want to dig in, you flip it backwards so that it can be dragged through. Now again, pedantically, I'm pushing this down all the time, make sure that it's a really good seal against there. Just lining it up, make sure it's pretty close. Starting at one end. Now, super important. This is this is the whole shooting match for me. Is no pressure. I just whoop, instant fail. I I let it run across the surface with basically the weight of the knife. Now, the reason I laugh too. If you fail by just dragging the blade, you're pretty good because it actually it almost does nothing. Um, it's, it's so soft against the, the, the plastic. Now, I felt it kind of bounce a couple of times against the guide plastic, and that's just because I'm not very good. Seriously, I'm the first one to mention this easily. I'm probably going to mention this three or four times in this video, bear with me. It's probably one of my worst skill sets. I'd love to have more time to work on it, but people want me to paint and weather things, so, so here we are. Now switching over to the scribing tool, it's finding the groove pretty well. It's a bit of a, you can feel a little bit of a rough spot in the middle there, but that's basically, it's not too bad. For a link panel line scribe, I'd say I'm 80% I'm of my best. In front of a camera, if you guys have filmed your own videos or YouTube tutorial things, you lose easily 50% of skill as soon as you flick that camera on. So you'll know what I mean. Okay, so that's stage one. A couple of very light runs with the scriber. Ooh. Ooh. What happens is you'll, you'll work a couple of things. If you miss a couple of times in the same spot, you're actually grooving that in. I, uh, I might have to sand that out afterwards. I'm sorry to show you the wrong thing but again. This is not like me hand painting something. This is, this is me putting my worst skill on the interwebs. 
I love doing these tool tutorials because this is how I get all my new interns who put all the hater comments on the on YouTube. When I do uh, weathering or painting, silence from the interns. The tools. And it's true. I do lots of stuff wrong. Okay. Step one. Reasonably complete. Now, after a couple of very light runs with the uh, with the scraper, get a little bit more brave. Now, make sure I'm going to make sure I can show you. Make sure you're nice and stable, and use your use your best steady hand, and apply just a little bit more pressure. Let's see if I can make a noise that you can hear. Now, it sounds funny, but that's what I actually listen for: is the uh, the sound. Uh, the feedback of uh, the scriber going through the plastic. Now I've seen some really good guys. Uh, there's uh, a mate of mine, so Aaron. Hey Aaron. Aaron Simons. Uh, man, he just zooms through plastic. It scares the heebie jeebies out of me when I watch him do it. So I, I can't go that fast. This is, this is max speed for me. If I go any faster, uh, <laughs> I can't. There it is. Actually, I did just go a bit faster. Because as you keep running this through, there we go. It's making its own groove. You know that spot where you sit on the sofa, playing Xbox? Boom. That's it. I don't want this seem too pronounced. I don't want to go too deep with this. And this is something I'll discuss in the second part of the video. Uh, on the strategy of panel lining in that, uh, yeah, I'll go into that in further detail. I'll keep this nice and short for you. So there we go. A couple more run throughs and I'm feeling pretty good. In fact, I was considering if it was going to be more of a major panel line, I would follow up with something like this guy, but I think we're good. I'm going to step back. Uh, if there was a lot of uh, leftover plastic in there, I would heal some of the, the line with this, but I think we're good. But I will show you one more quick thing. And then really quick, and you can do this either with the, uh, the guide tape in place or without. I'm gonna leave it in just to show you. Now this is a, what size are we? 0.5 millimeter uh, plasma rifle. Oh, excuse me, uh, click pencil, mechanical pencil. Sorry, I'm, I'm struggling because in Japanese it's called sharp, but because it's always sharp. Uh, mechanical pencil, right, from Daiso, of course. There's nothing in my, my house, we're such weebs, nothing in our house is not Japanese. And I'm just gonna reconfirm that it's nice and straight. I'm chucking a bit of carbon in here for you. There we go. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Tape off, and you should be good to rock and roll. That's a, that's a panel line put in. Like that. Done. Okay, rocking on to the second part of the video. Uh, I'm going to talk about strategies for using these panel lines to accentuate your model and uh, highlight certain areas and details with it. Let's get into that now. Thanks a bunch, guys. I hope that helped. See ya. Big thanks to Hobbyco and the visionary Ryan San Pedro for bringing the Japanese hobby to us locally. Pre-roll shout out for the exploding epic pop robot rocket punch team. We super appreciate you. Ivan, Grant, Con, Jack, RJ, Tweets, Matthias, Peter, Robert, Kelso, Kevin, Derek, Dom, Nick, Danny, John, Andy, Philip, Jake, Pete, Ben, Commander Newbie, Hal, Kieran, Jody, and welcoming Chris Regis, Guy Finney, and Nelson to the team. Thank you so very much, guys. And of course, the Brobot Inner Circle, the awesome folks that make this happen. I couldn't do it without you. Always, thank you so very much. Please join us.